Hello, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle with a brief tutorial explaining three probability distribution terms that can be confusing at first, and those are the probability mass function, the probability density function, and the cumulative distribution function. So those are the three terms that can be confusing. I'll come back to this chart at the end, just note for now that it's a matter of two different perspectives we take about the distribution. First, is the distribution discrete or continuous? And second, what kind of question do we ask about the distribution? Do we ask a density question or do we ask a cumulative question? And I'll show you what I mean. First, let's note that we have lots of distributions in math, but they all basically have the same job and that is to characterize the behavior of a random variable. So consider a single six-sided die. If we roll that, there's six outcomes, but it's random. That's the random variable. We characterize the behavior of the random variable with a uniform distribution, which is flat to indicate that each outcome is equally likely. Now if we roll several die together and add them up, take their summation, that's a random variable too, but it's going to be characterized by a normal distribution. And finally, for examples, we might have an operational process that breaks down every once in a while at random intervals, so that's a random variable. We may decide to characterize the behavior of the random variable with a Poisson distribution. Many different types of random variables that in turn can be characterized by many different types of distributions. So first, consider continuous versus discrete. Here's a plot of the bell curve, probably familiar to you. It's the normal distribution. It's a solid line which indicates that it's a continuous distribution. It characterizes a continuous random variable. What I mean by that is you could pick a point on the line and you're not really picking a point there are an infinite number of values along this continuous distribution. So another way to think about this, I think a better way to think about this is if we have to measure the random variable, if we have to measure it, then it's continuous and it draws from an, theoretically an infinite number of possibilities. So that if we want to specify a local location, say here where x as on the x-axis equals 39. We don't really say x equals 39 because it's continuous. We want to say what's the probability our random variable will fall in between say 38.9 and 39.1. So we can say What's the probability our random variable will approximately equal 39? But technically it's an interval. So what I have here is a continuous random variable and a probability density function. So the D stands for density. And I ask the probability density function question in this manner, and I'm going to continue to 39 as an example. What's the probability that my random variable x will lie between two values? That's approximately 39. And so I could look down here and go up to the curve. I pick a lower bound and an upper bound. I slice this curve really. And you can see I'm going to get some percentage. It's going to be a little above 2% it looks like. That's my probability density function. It gives me the local probability of an approximate outcome for the random variable. Now instead, consider my random variable might be something like a coin toss. I flip a coin, I'm going to get heads or tails. If I flip a heads, I'm going to call that success. I'm going to flip it 10 times. That means before I start, I know I can get anywhere from 0 heads total to 10 heads total. Notice, I can count those outcomes. This is a discrete random variable and it would be characterized by a discrete function and I think the better way to think about that is remember we said the continuous had to be measured but my discrete can be counted if I conduct 10 trials 
I'm going to have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, or 10 successes, or 10 heads. But I'm not going to have 5 and a half. I have discrete outcomes. They can be counted. They're drawn from a finite pool. And notice this time I don't really need to specify an interval. I can say, what's the probability that my random variable x will be equal to exactly 3? It's not really approximate. It's exact. And now instead of a probability density function, I have a probability mass function. I still asked a question about a local outcome, but it was of a discrete function that characterized a discrete random variable. So it's a PMF instead of a PDF. So now we've explained our first distinction. It was continuous versus discrete. The distribution, we don't have a choice about this, the distribution characterizes the random variable. That random variable is either going to be continuous or discrete. Continuous is measured, discrete variables are counted. Continuous draws from an infinite pool of outcomes, discrete has a finite number of outcomes. Examples of continuous are distance, time, asset returns, typically in finance because it's convenient to do that. Discrete examples an example in finance would be a default on a bond as in it's either going to default or it's not one or zero not in between and we might characterize the frequency of loss with a discrete random variable and therefore a discrete function now let's just look at the other dimension which was discrete versus continuous and now if we look at the blue line here at the bottom that's the same normal distribution that we looked at. That is the bell curve. It just looks squashed down because the x-axis runs from 0 to 100 now instead of 0 to 10%. So the blue line is the bell curve, and that still is that probability density function. So in other words, we can ask, what's the probability of a random variable being equal to approximately 39? Well, it's somewhere here at about 2%. That's the local question, in this case the density question. Now what if we instead asked, what's the probability that the random variable will be less than or equal to 39? That's the only difference here. I went from going to from approximately equal to less than or equal. In that case, the probability is the total area under the curve to the left in this density function as a percentage of the total area under the curve. Well, I've described that here with the purple line. So at about here at 39, we're somewhere at about 15%. This purple line characterizes the area under the curve to the left, and therefore the probability that the random variable will be less than or equal to some random variable. And that's why this purple line rises up like this, up and to the right, and is asymptotic to 100% because as we move out here to the right, the probability, say, of getting a value that's less than or equal to 70, you can see, well, is almost the whole area, so it's pretty close to 100%. The purple line is the cumulative distribution function. So the key there is we're asking the question, what's the probability of less than or equal to? And that's the difference. Probability density function asks a local question, approximately equal to. Cumulative distribution is less than or equal to. So eventually, as we move to the right, regardless of the distribution, we're going to have to get pretty close to 100%. And over to the left, we're going to have to start pretty close to 0%. That's of the cumulative of the continuous distribution, but we can do the same thing with the discrete distribution. So here's the probability mass function here down below of that binomial distribution. So remember right here is the probability that we might flip exactly five heads out of ten, exactly five. If we go up here, What's this? This is the probability that we will flip five heads or less in total. So that would include four and three and two and one. It's cumulative. So again, this here is the cumulative distribution function. It's going to have to start near zero and be asymptotic to 100%. That's the difference. And so in summary, we can now say the first 
perspective is discrete versus continuous.